The mechanics of the mainline Pokemon games are very simple. You receive a Pokemon, you use that Pokemon to battle and capture more Pokemon, then you raise your Pokemon's levels by battling them against other trainers' teams or other wild Pokemon. You do this over and over until you reach the champion who has the strongest Pokemon. Many people complain that the modern games don't have a steep enough level curve and you usually end up being very overleveled, which takes away the challenge. So I decided to mod my game to prevent my Pokemon from leveling at all. Today, we're going to see if I can beat Pokemon X without earning any EXP. Now before we begin, I would like to go over a few things. Number one, using the PK3DS application, I modified a dumped ROM of Pokemon X and made every Pokemon give the least amount of EXP possible. Unfortunately, the lowest number of EXP that could be given off by a Pokemon is 1, not 0. However, at a rate of 1 EXP point per defeated Pokemon, a level 5 Pokemon would take over 100 battles to level up once. This number gets much larger for higher level Pokemon, so you won't have to worry about any of my party members leveling up during the playthrough. Number 2. I know the YouTube user Chaotic Meatball did a video about this very topic. I did not watch his video before doing this playthrough, so I did this playthrough as blind as I could. After completing this challenge, I watched his video and realized we use different strategies to complete this challenge anyway. Number 3. This entire playthrough was streamed over on my Twitch channel. If you enjoy watching content like this, go over and give me a follow at twitch.tv slash nerdyedits. Link is in the description below. With all that out of the way, let's get into the run. So for a run like this, it doesn't really matter which starter I pick, since a level 5 Pokemon won't be very helpful by the time I reach the first gym. I decided to pick Fennekin since most of the wild Pokemon in this first section are weak to fire anyway. So since we won't be able to raise Pokemon normally in this run, the only way we're going to be able to progress is to catch plenty of Pokemon and hopefully overpower the major battles with sheer numbers alone. But what if I told you that in this first section, I only need to catch one Pokemon, a level 3 Bunnelby. Now I know what you might be thinking. How the hell am I supposed to beat Viola with a level 5 Fennekin and a level 3 Bunnelby? Well, I'm not. In Vanneville Town, there's a hiker that will trade you a Farfetch for a Bunnelby. In Gens 1 through 5, the Pokemon you receive from an in-game trade is always the same level as the one that you give. But starting in Gen 6, the Pokemon you receive have set levels. Not only is this Farfetch'd at level 10, but it also has a Jolly Nature, which raises speed while lowering special attack. And to top it off, it also has a guaranteed perfect speed IV. With Quacklin at our side, we easily took out Viola's team with three aerial aces and got the first badge. The trek to Gym 2 in this game is god awful and is genuinely my least favorite part of what might just be my least favorite main series Pokemon game, so I'll try to keep this section brief. I decided not to catch any Pokemon on the way to Lumios because they would all become useless very quickly. In the city, I struggled my way through the battle against Sycamore because I forgot to heal. But with a well-timed potion, I made it through the fight by spamming Aerial Ace. I ended up picking Squirtle, but I only ended up using it in a battle or two because it stuck at level 10. After making my way through all the story padding in Camphrey Town and the Parfrom Palace, I caught the Static Snorlax waiting on Route 7. Serena and I crushed Trevor and Tierno, and I made my way through the connecting cave. At this point, I decided to catch a full team to replace the members who would no longer be useful in battle. I caught a Metatite in Connecting Cave, and on Route 8, I caught a Zangoose, Absol, and Spoink. Next, I made my way through Sparkling Cave and took out the Team Flare Grunts inside. After exiting the cave, I restored the two fossils I picked up and obtained an Amora and an Aerodactyl. Now we finally made it to Silage City, the home of the second gym. But our leg of this journey isn't over yet. Before taking on the gym, I went up to Route 10 in an attempt to catch an Eevee. Depending on the level you catch Eevee on this route, it will have the move Baby Doll Eyes, which is basically Growl but with priority, which is super useful in the next gym since both of Grant's Pokemon have good physical attacks. However, I couldn't seem to find an Eevee at the appropriate level. So instead, I caught two Snubble, both of which had the ability Intimidate and the move Charm. I also caught a Halucha, which is easily one of the most busted Pokemon in this game. Admittedly, I was pretty nervous about the fight against Grant, but it ended up going pretty well. I sent out Halucha against Amora. Rock Smash nearly one shot, but Halucha was taken out with one takedown because Amora has the ability Refrigerate, which turns normal type moves into ice type moves. But on the plus side, the recoil damage took out Amora. Next up is Tyrant. I sent out one of my Snubble to get the Intimidate drop, then continuously spammed Charm to get Tyrant's attack stat as low as possible. Once Snubble went down, I sent in my Amora, and two Aurora Beams later, I obtained the second badge. The journey to the next gym is much more enjoyable. After beating Karina's Lucarios, I once again realized I needed to catch more Pokemon in order to prepare for the next gym. I'll go over the rest of my catches in a bit, but the one that I was most excited for is Dedenne, 
The Dene is the Pika clone of this generation, and a Pokemon that I've never used before. And no wonder, since it's only a 5% encounter and it's only available on Route 11. Despite never using it, I decided it would be the perfect counter to Karina's Halucha. As I mentioned before, Halucha is incredibly busted. Fighting and flying is a hard type combo to beat, and its attack stat is nothing to scoff at. But Dedenne is an electric fairy type, so this little rat was definitely the best shot I had at taking out Karina's ace. Other than Dedenne, I caught Staravia, Mr. Mime, and Sableye. Even though I was confident in my plan to use Dedenne to deal with Halucha, I knew getting to Halucha would be kinda rough. Her two other Pokemon are Mianfu and Machoke. Both aren't too hard to take down, but have really good attack stats. Plus, my entire team at this point was around level 22, and hers was pushing 30. Karina started off with a Machoke. I sent in Sableye, which is immune to fighting type attacks. However, it also has a lackluster attack stat. Despite this, I tried spamming Shadow Claw to get the KO. Instead, Karina fully healed Machoke and took me out with the Rock Tomb after using Leer several times. Then Mr. Mime came out. I used Reflect, then tried spamming Psy Wave over and over. But sadly, Machoke took out Mr. Mime with Leer and Rock Tomb as well. Soravia came out and used Double Team to boost its evasion, but was one shot by Rock Tomb, which is a base 80% accurate move. Halucha came out and tanked a Rock Tomb, then KO'd Machoke with two wing attacks. It also managed to take out Mianfu with just a few aerial aces, and we finally made it to her Halucha. Just like the last gym, Snubble came out and got the Intimidate drop first, then spammed Charm until it went down. Just before Halucha landed the finishing blow, it got off two Home Claws, which raised both attack and accuracy. In an attempt to slow it down, I used a Lick twice and managed to get Paralysis on the second one, just before getting knocked out. The Dene then came in, and after using Parabolic Charge a few times, we emerged victorious. After beating the gym, I went and got the free Mega Lucario and used it to beat up Karina's. Then I went and picked up the free Lapis. Both of these Pokemon were really good additions to the team and lasted surprisingly long considering they were stuck at level 32 and level 30 respectively. Also on Route 12, I picked up a Chata and a Tauros. Next up is the rival battle in Kumarine City. Two words, Mega Lucario. Moving on. The gym didn't give me much trouble, but I did have to reset once on Ramos because I didn't have anything to take out his jump luff. So, I just slapped the Rock Tomb TM on Lucario, Mega Evolved, and took out the Jump Luff. Gogo came out and used Bulldoze, which knocked Lucario down to 7 HP. I swapped into Halucha, hoping to avoid another Bulldoze, but Ramos predicted the switch and used Takedown, which brought Halucha to 6 HP. I took the opportunity to fully heal Lucario, and Gogo missed his Takedown. I hit with Wing Attack, fully expecting to get taken out, but instead, Gogo was healed by a Hyper Potion. I managed to get Gogo to about half HP, but was finally taken out by Takedown. Snubble came out and got an Intimidate off, and was also taken out by Takedown. I then brought out Lucario, and finished off Gogo and Weeping Bell. Before going into the desert, I boxed half my team in order to make room for some Ground-type Pokémon. I picked up Dugtrio, Trapinch, and Gibble to help take out the Electric-type gym in Lumio City. But before I went into the city, I had to take on more Team Flare Grunts in the Power Plant. These fights weren't really difficult, just tedious. Most of my team fared pretty well, but if I ever got into a bind, I just sent out Mega Lucario and swept. Next up is the Lumios Gym. I sent out Dugtrio against Clemont because I forgot he started with the Molga. I tried to get a few hits in, but ended up barely doing any damage and was taken out with Aerial Ace. Lucario came in, Mega Evolved, and KO'd a Molga with two Rock Tombs. Magneton was taken out with a 3x Bone Club, and Heliolisk took out Lucario with a Thunderbolt. Thankfully, it didn't have any good moves to touch Trap Inch and was taken out with two digs. And with that, I was five badges down. So for the beginning of the next leg, I unfortunately lost a little bit of footage. All you missed was another rival beatdown and my capturing of two Weaving Bell. Also, I caught a Quagsire. Before reaching the next area, I went back to Route 8 and picked up a Leaf Stone, which I used to evolve one of my Weeping Bell into Victory Bell. Afterwards, I made it to Laver City and went straight for the gym. I avoided most of the trainers since they weren't going to give me experience anyway and took on Valerie. My Victory Bell paralyzed Mawile right off the bat, then Quagsire was brought out and took out Mawile with two Mud Bombs. Mega Lucario then one-shot Mr. Mime with a Sword Stance boosted Poison Jab, and nearly one-shot Sylveon with the same move. However, Poison Jab managed to poison Sylveon, so the Fairy-type fainted after knocking Lucario down to 16 HP with Dazzling Gleam. Really quick leg this time. Despite how easy the last few legs of this journey were, this is where the challenge really starts to kick in. The Pokeball Factory wasn't too terrible though, and I managed to make it through pretty quickly. I passed the Route 15 and arrived in Dende Mill Town. 
After stocking up on healing items, I went north to the Frost Cavern where I caught a Piloswine, Jinx, and a Bear Tick. All three of these Pokemon are pretty decent attackers, so I was confident that they would be able to carry me through this next section. However, I started to doubt their strength when I got my ass handed to me by a double battle later in the cave. After dusting myself off, I dove back into the cave and threw myself at the battle again, this time coming out victorious with just one Pokemon remaining. Still wasn't brimming with confidence at this point. Still, I made it to the end of the cave where I took out the Team Flare members waiting for me. Next up is the rival fight in Anastar City. Not gonna sugarcoat this one. She creamed me. Since 4 out of 6 of my team were weak to her Flareon at this point, I decided to backtrack a bit. Back on Route 15, there's a house off the beaten path where you can pick up the Super Rod. I then took the Super Rod to Route 22 and fished up a Gyarados. Thankfully at level 35, Gyarados knows both Aqua Tail and Ice Fang. Two insanely good moves for a powerful physical attacker. To ride off her moveset, I went and picked up a Heart Scale and reminded Gyarados how to use Bite. The second attempt on the rival wasn't all too great, but I managed to eke out a victory. This gym was rough. I had absolutely no idea which paths I was supposed to take, so I ended up wandering around aimlessly and unintentionally fighting all the gym trainers. Eventually though, I made it to Olympia. I expected to be at this fight for a while, but thankfully it only took me two attempts. I made it through her Sigilith by spamming Jinx's Avalanche, then when her Slowking came out, I tried spamming Lapras's Thunderbolt, but didn't get much damage off. However, I did manage to paralyze it. Gyarados then came out and took out Slowking with a few bites. But the real MVP of this fight was Bear Tick. She managed to tank two Psychics, survive on one HP, and get a crit on her second Shadow Claw to take out the Meowstic, earning us the seventh badge. This leg sucked. Not only was this the hardest part of the challenge, but I feel like this was when the devs realized they didn't really give Team Flare a reason to exist, so they crammed their entire story into what's normally supposed to be about an hour of gameplay. Seriously. You fight Lysander three times in this game, which is pretty standard for a Pokemon villain, but all three fights are between the 7th and 8th gym. Speaking of Lysander, he absolutely kicked my ass in our first battle. Even on the second attempt where I won, I still barely managed to scrape by. Mianfu went down because it missed High Jump Kick and was taken out by Gyarados' Aqua Tail. Next he brought out his Gyarados, and that thing was a monster. It took out my Chatot, which was admittedly a sacrificial lamb, and knocked Lapras, Jinx, and Gyarados all below 25% HP. While it wailed on my team, however, I kept switching in Gyarados to get more intimidation drops. Bearchick then came out and took out Gyarados with an Icicle Crash. Then Pyroar came out. I sent out Lapras and healed him to full, but Fire Blast knocked him back to red HP immediately. So I healed Gyarados to full, let Lapras go down, and took out Pyroar with a couple of Aqua Tails. Finally, Murkrow came out. It took out my Gyarados with Foul Play because Foul Play does more damage the better the target's attack stat is, but then was taken out in one hit by Bear Tick's Icicle Crash. The rest of the Flare Grunts in here didn't give me any trouble, but Admin Solosia was even harder than Lysander. Despite the fact she only has two Pokemon, it took me five attempts to beat her. She has both a Mainectric and a Drapion. Her Mainectric has Thunderbolt and Flamethrower, which mow through my team, and by the time that I made it to her Drapion, it easily was able to chip off the little HP that I had left. On my fifth attempt, Bear Tick and Jinx were able to tank a Flamethrower each and took out Magnetric. Then I sent out my Gyarados and was able to get some damage off on Drapion, but it started using Acupressure, which boosts a random stat every time it's used. I kept chipping away with Aqua Tail until Gyarados went down, then sent in Mega Lucario and took it out with Bone Club. Unfortunately, Zerosa gave me just as much trouble. This battle once again took me five times. His first Pokemon was a Crobat that was easy enough to take out, but his second and final Pokemon, Malamar, just would not go down. Like most of the battles in this section of the game, I just had to get lucky. As I mentioned before, Crobat was easy. Malamar then came out and took out Gyarados with Psycho Cut and Lapras with Superpower. By the way, because Malamar's ability is contrary, its stats get boosted from Superpower, not lowered. I brought out Mega Lucario to try to get in as much damage as possible. Luckily, I managed to poison Malamar with my first poison jab. I then just kept reviving my fallen team members until Malamar eventually fainted for poison. So those last two fights seemed pretty difficult, right? Well, those fights were child's play compared to the second Lysander fight. This was, without a doubt, the most difficult fight in this challenge. On my first two attempts, I didn't even make it past his first Pokemon. And on the third attempt, I limped my way to his Pyroar, who incinerated the remaining members of my team. I realized pretty quickly that my existing strategy of just waiting to get lucky wasn't going to work on this fight. So I decided to do something that I was saving as a last resort, EV training. If you're unfamiliar, EVs, or effort values, are hidden numbers that your Pokemon get when they defeat an enemy Pokemon in normal gameplay. 
For every four EV points a Pokemon earns, they gain one extra point in the corresponding stat. However, before Generation 6, EV training was a very slow process. You had to find a Pokemon that gives off the kind of EV points that you're looking for, and continuously knock it out until you earn the max amount of EV points in your desired stat, which is 252 for one stat category. Thankfully, the Gen 6 games have a mechanic that greatly accelerates this process. Super Training. Super Training is a set of minigames that gives your Pokemon more EVs depending on the level you're playing on. The first level of minigames gives you 4 EVs, the second level gives you 8, and the third level gives you 12, which translates to 1, 2, and 3 stat points respectively. I decided to choose Gyarados' attack and speed stats without maxing it out, then taught him Toxic via the TM. To assure my victory, I also picked up some X items and then finally hopped back into the fight with Lysander. I immediately got the Intimidate drop on Mianxiao and used Toxic. However, the Mianxiao's acrobatics took me to under 50 HP, so I swapped in Chatot and let it go down, then brought Gyarados back in to get another Intimidate drop, all while Toxic ticked away at my opponent's health. After an X Defender and a Hyper Potion, Gyarados was sitting at just about half HP when Toxic finally took down Lysander's first Pokemon. Next, his Gyarados came out. While it tried to take me out with Outrage, I swapped back and forth using X Defense and my very limited supply of Hyper Potions. When I reached a point where I knew I wouldn't get knocked out, I used Toxic to start whittling away his HP. After some stalling, his Outrages were doing less than a quarter of my health, and he too was taken out by Toxic. Next was his ace, Pyroar. My plan was to start boosting Gyarados with X Attacks and go all in, but I got taken out in two blows with Hyper Voice. So I let Pyroar rip his way through my team to get Gyarados back to full health. Toxic them, and then revived my Pokemon as they fainted and kept sending them out to die while Toxic slowly took out Pyroar. Finally, his Honchkrow went down to Icicle Cratch from Bear Tick, and with that, I beat the second Lysander fight. So now that we've passed that hurdle, the rest of this game really isn't that bad. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because I Master Balled the level 50 Xerneas and immediately added it to my team. Is this the most honorable way to beat the game? Certainly not. But I didn't take on this challenge to get it done cleanly, I just wanted to get it done. Right after catching Xerneas is the final battle with Lysander. This time, it was an absolute cakewalk. Xerneas took out three of his Pokemon and was finally taken down by Pyroar. Thankfully, it was weak enough for Gyarados to come in and knock it out with Aqua Tail. Finally, we were done with the worst evil team in video game history. The road to Snowball City was relatively uneventful. I picked up Durant and Torkoal to help me out in the Ice Gym, then I took out Sycamore and the Three Stooges without any trouble. Once I got to the city, I made my way through the confusing gym puzzle and finally made it to Wolfric. Durant took out his Abomasnow with two Iron Heads, nearly fainting in the process. Xerneas took out Avalug with two Moonblasts and got off a Moonblast on Cryagonal, which took out Xerneas with Flash Cannon. Torkoal took one for the team as I got Xerneas back to full HP, and I sent it out to finish the fight with Moonblast, earning us the final gym badge. We're finally here, the end game. I made my way through the victory road while trying to battle as few trainers as possible. Because, you know, I can't level up my team. The only battle of note was the one against Serena at the halfway point, but Xerneas dealt with their entire team. While I made my way through the cave, I caught the Mon who would be making up my final team alongside Xerneas and Durant. I caught Dredagon, Graveler, and Girder while making my way through the first time, and then I went back in and got a Lickitung right before taking on the League. After I made sure my team had the right movesets and held items, I entered the Pokemon League. To make this a little more challenging, I decided that I had to beat the entire Elite Four and Champion in one go. If I lost at any point, I had to reset and try from the beginning. Thankfully, I only lost once, and it was the very first member I fought, so I didn't waste much time. The first member I took on in my winning attempt was Drasna. I expected to be able to use Xerneas to mow down her entire team, but unfortunately, her first Pokemon was Dragalge, which is part Poison type. And while I got close to taking it out with Moonblast, Xerneas got taken out with two Sludge Bombs. Dredagon then came out, tanked a Dragon Pulse, and took out Dragalge with the Dragon Tail. Then I sent Graveler out against her Altaria. I set up Stealth Rocks and healed Xerneas to full while Altaria took out Graveler in a few hits. Xerneas came out, dodged Altaria's Sing, set up Geomancy, which boosts Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed, then ran through the rest of Drasna's team. Next up was Wilkstrom. I once again was screwed over by dual types because of Wilkstrom's Cleft Key catching my Girder off guard. So I brought Durant in to take any potential fire type moves and spammed Dig until Klefki fainted. Girder then took out his Proba Pass. I managed to take it out with Power Up Punch and Hammer Arm, but fell to 30 HP from Flash King. Aegislash was next, and even though it's one of the best Pokemon in this gen, it was one shot by a crit Night Slash from Dredagon. His final Pokemon is Scizor, and this thing ran through my team. I got down to just my Durant with less than 50% HP, but thankfully I had a max revive and used it on Girder, who took out Scizor with Super Power. 
Malva came next, and I immediately set up Stealth Rock since her whole team is weak to rock. I then sent out Durant as a sacrificial lamb against Pyroar, who of course decimated him. Girder came out, and despite the fact that Hammer Arm is a 90% accurate move, I missed and was taken out by Hyper Voice. So since I faced the slightest bit of trouble, I used my strategy from the first fight and set up Geomancy, then swept the rest of her team. I then tried to use the same strat on Cybold, but his Klotzer is an absolute monster. This thing took out most of my team at least once, including Xerneas, but I eventually managed to get Xerneas back out there and swept his team. And finally, we've reached Diantha, the worst champion character in the Pokemon franchise. Don't at me. Not gonna lie, this fight was nothing. It took out Halucha with Lickitung and Graveler, her Gudra then took out my Dredagon, so I resorted to Geomancy Boost into Xerneas Sweep. And with that, I reached the end of my journey. I had seen the Noe XP challenge done a few times before doing the challenge myself, and sure enough, it was a really good time. I definitely recommend doing this challenge if you have the means to do so. And while this challenge was definitely challenging, it felt a little too easy towards the beginning and end of the challenge. If I were to do this again, I would for sure limit or even prohibit the use of items in battle, because that saved me from whiting out a bunch of times. But no matter what rules I add, I am 100% doing this again. So if you want to see that, be sure to click the link to my Twitch channel in the description and click the follow button to be notified when I go live. I stream a variety of games 3-4 to four days a week and primarily do challenge runs. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos from me in the future. I upload stream highlights on this channel and upload unedited streams to the VOD channel. In fact, the day before this video goes up, I will be uploading the first VOD of this playthrough. So if you want to see the full unedited playthrough, go check out the VOD channel. The whole playthrough will be uploaded in the coming weeks after this goes live. Final shameless plug. If you want to keep up with all things nerdy edits, click the link in the description to join my Discord server. You can chat with other people who watch me, stay up to date on what I'm streaming for the week, and harass me to play your favorite 15 plus year old licensed game. Thank you all for watching. I'm Nerdy Edits, and I'll see you all next time.